fancy phone, yeah. I ain't gonna fancy this. Maybe I'm not getting university because <coughs> 27 grand ain't coming out of my pocket, yeah. But the fact is, we got our health, yeah. We have fully functioning bodies, fully functioning <coughs> brains. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, you know. We have, the fact is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides food for us still today, yeah. The, rizq, the food that we get on our table is not because of our own efforts, it's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be grateful for this. The fact that we have full stomachs at the end of the day. The fact that we have, you know, families that care about us. This is all a blessing and a barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should never forget this. And we should not only just not forget this, we should be thankful to Allah. Thankful in praising Him, thankful in doing the actions that He's asked us to do, to following His Sharia. You know, this is what we should work towards. This is what we should try to do. To differentiate ourselves from Bani Israel. Yeah? Because we don't want to be like Bani Israel, who are like complaining all the time. Yeah? Like a moaning wife, yeah? We don't want to be like that, isn't it? Yeah? Do you know what I mean? Yeah? We want to be happy, isn't it, inshallah? Yeah? Isn't it? Allah SWT is taking care of us, isn't it? Yeah? You know? <clears throat> but then. Unfortunately, this was only the uh, start of the problems that Bani Israel was going to pose Musa yeah. Now, while uh, Musa was, uh, while, they were, while they were wondering, they actually found a... Um, Allah SWT one, commanded Musa to conquer a town. Yeah? Conquer the town of uh, Canaanites, where the people, the Hittites, they lived. Yeah? And, Apparently, they, had pe they were people who had like, uh, caused Bani Israel much trouble. Yeah. So, Musa Islam told his people, said, we're going to go conquer this town. Yeah. Allah SWT has commanded us to do so. And you have to imagine, you have to remember, amongst Bani Israel, there was over 600,000 men. Yeah? 600,000 men. And, they, and the Musa Islam went to them and said, look, we're going to go fight Allah SWT. This is a command from Allah. And what did they say? They said, Oh Moses, a great people dwell therein. We will not go in unless they leave. Yeah? You have to kick them out first, yeah? Before we even think about going. We're not gonna fight them. Yeah. Only two people stood up and said, they said, once we enter the door, inshallah we will be victorious. Yeah? Only two people said this. Everyone else was, yeah, you and your Lord go fight to Musa. Yeah? This is what they said. Yeah. You go evict them and they will come and, you know, set up shop, isn't it, yeah? But this cowardice, yeah, this fear factor, yeah, that they weren't willing to sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them to wandering in the desert. Until the current generation of Bani Israel were too old, or they were replaced by a younger generation, who were willing to sacrifice for the deen. Who were willing to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments, yeah? And to be... As Allah subhanahu, to be the slaves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted them to be, yeah? who were deserving of Philistine. Yeah? In the meantime, they'd have to wander the desert because of their disobedience, because they were rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's call, yeah? call to action. So this was their punishment. Yeah? This was their punishment. But they didn't stop there. Because in their wandering, now they were just wandering the desert. They weren't even, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't even going to take them to Philistine for a while. They were wandering the desert. And they ended up coming back to Mount Sinai. Now Mount Sinai is the place where Musa السلام, first received the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So upon reaching this place, Musa السلام, he told his people, I'm going to go and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? I'm going to go and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told them he'd be gone for 30 days. Yeah? Now due to a misunderstanding, it ended up being 40 days. Yeah? And... But in the meantime, how, in the meantime, how did the people of uh, how did Bani Israel respond to this? Yeah? Because he went ten extra days, a man, a devious man amongst Bani Israel called Samiri, who was inclined towards evil, yeah, he suggested that they find another guy. Yeah? And he said to the people, he said, In order to find true guidance, you need a God, and I shall provide one for you. So he collected all their gold, yeah, and he put it in a hole in the ground and melted it. And then he did like some actions, you know, like magicians do, yeah? You know, abracadabra and all that stuff, yeah? And, you know, put a little show for them, yeah? And then he fashioned out of the gold, a golden calf, yeah? And it was a hollow calf. 
So when the sound passed through, uh, a calf, by the way, is a baby cow. So when the sound passed through the uh, the statue and the idol, it made a sound. Uh, sorry, when wind passed through, it made a sound like a, a noise. So people thought this was supernatural, yeah, and they started worshiping the calf. So forty days later, Musa al Islam descended, yeah, down, and he found his people singing and dancing around this golden calf, yeah. And he's thinking, what's going on, yeah? What's going on with these guys? And he was angry, yeah? So he came down, he went up to get the um, Ten Commandments, as you may have uh, obviously heard about in the, uh, you know, the film and or the biblic stories or whatever, yeah? So he went up to get that, isn't it, yeah? But when he came down, he found them all singing and dancing, isn't it, yeah? <coughs> dancing around this golden calf. So he got angry at them, he said, what are you doing? Yeah? You've wronged yourself by worshipping this calf, yeah? And he commanded them that they need to uh, repent for this action. Repent for this action and demonstrate their repentance. Yeah. You know, but these people look at them. They Musa Islam literally gone for forty days and they choose an, they find another god. Yeah. You know, this is how backward these people were. Yeah, this is how you know how stupid and how ungrateful these people were. But the reason we're going through all these different analogies, all these different examples, yeah, is for one us to understand. For us to examine, look, what is that Bani Israel did? But for us to understand and un look at ourselves and think, what it is that we are doing? Yeah? Are we following the same footsteps? For example, today. Today we see that many Muslim youth, unfortunately, they've been distracted by things around them in society. Yeah? They're distracted by girls. Yeah? They're distracted by money. Yeah? They're distracted by the gangster lifestyle. Isn't it, yeah? You know, how many guys we see, you know, they call Muhammad and they say, yeah, man, call me Mobrof, yeah? You know what I mean? A guy named Imran, he goes, yeah, my name's Ims, yeah? All right? You know, some guy, you know, he's called like, um, I think that's enough examples, yeah? So, you know, you've got, you've got, you've got these different characters, isn't it, yeah? And then it's just like, what's, what's wrong with your real name, yeah? You know what I mean? But it's because, you know, obviously they want to be like that kind of guy, isn't it? They want to be, yeah, man, Ims, man, yeah, what's going on? How's the, how's the rims, yeah? Do you know what I mean, yeah? <laughs> you know, this, this, is, this is what they want to do, isn't it? Yeah, it's, everything's just like, you know, let's, let's make everything sound cool, shall we, isn't it, yeah? Because for them, Islam is not cool, is it, yeah? What's cool is following these, uh, you know, gangsters, yeah? So-called gangs, uh, gangsters, uh, what's it called, um, these uh, music stars, isn't it, yeah? We're going around, yeah, singing these songs, yeah? Get dancing in a uh, Gaelic manner, yeah, all right. You know, who's gonna respect this, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the fact, isn't it? This is what they want to do. This is what they want to be like, isn't it? Yeah. But what value is this to this? What value is there to this? Yeah, to be like these people. Yeah, because let's look at what these people represent. Yeah, let's look at what these people represent. These people don't represent anything good. Yeah. The, what they represent is that you need to live your life to the max. Yeah, you need to enjoy yourself. Yeah, that you need to make yourself happy. Yeah. But essentially what they're saying is you need to live, you are the reason why you're living, yeah? You are the slave of your desires, yeah? Follow your desires, do whatever you want to do, yeah? That will make you happy, yeah? And this is the idea that they're promoting. And unfortunately, some Muslims are falling into this trap. Some falling, Muslims are falling into this trap, where they're becoming obsessed with this kind of lifestyle, yeah? You know? And that's unfortunate because the fact is, if they become obsessed with this lifestyle, then obviously you can only follow one lifestyle in your life. You can't have two lifestyles. Yeah, that creates a schizophrenic. Yeah, you know where you have two different personalities. Yeah, so at home when you go home, you're nice to your parents, you get along with them, you be acha bacha. Yeah, and when you go outside, you know what I mean. You're ims again, isn't it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, getting into trouble. Yeah, linking the gals. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, what kind of life is this? Yeah? What kind of life is this? Because the fact of the matter is, is if we don't do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us, yeah? if we don't follow His way, yeah? then we will not have success in this life. We will not have, sorry, we will not have success in the hereafter, isn't it? Because yeah? no matter what this life leads us to, yeah? if this life is good or bad, it's neither here nor there really. Yeah? I mean, I'll give you an example, like if you play a, full, uh, you play a game of football, the first half of the match, even if you lose that half, what difference does it make if you win the game? Does it make a difference? 
If you lose 5-0 in the first half, but you win 6-5,